We talk a lot about social, in social capital markets, we're talking mostly about financial capital here, but there is so much more that this group is doing with all different types of capital. And um, I was sort of, I was approached by the folks at Facebook who obviously have a lot of social capital in society and the ways that they're thinking about that and really taking a fresh look at the way that they can use that power. So please welcome Deepti Doshi from Facebook. Good morning, everybody. I used to work at Acumen Fund years ago, and so being here on the stage representing Facebook is definitely full circle for me. Um, and so, you know, I'll start with this image of Hurricane Harvey hit, hitting Houston, and I know we all kind of feel overwhelmed by the number of natural disasters that have surrounded us over the past um, couple months. Harvey, just to remind you guys, uh, was 27, t 27 t tons, 27, gal 27 million gallons of um, water that fell over Texas and Louisiana, killing 82 people and ruining the lives of thousands more. Jennifer Cardenas, a mother of three uh, and a native of Ingleston, Texas, created a Facebook group to keep her friends and family up to date on what was happening with her. But over just a few days, that Facebook group went from just her family and friends to over a couple hundred thousand people. So she, with her sister Shauna, and 80 other volunteer leaders were actually able, through this Facebook group, to be able to perform 8,000 rescues, and in some cases, respond to people's calls for help before 911. And so here we are at SOCAP, short form for social capital. And I know most of you, um, as I was before, are thinking about how we can structure financial capital for social outcomes. But for us at Facebook, as Lindsay said, it's a bit more literal. We really are trying to figure out how we can take people, networks of people's relationships to be able to help society perform more effectively. So this is the question it is that's keeping us up late at night, um, and as many of you know, we started as a place for college kids to connect. That's how Mark started our company, and over time, we realized that it's also how friends and family are staying in touch with one another. But some of the most interesting things it is that we've noticed happening on Facebook are people meeting, peop are people meeting others who they actually don't know, but whom they share um, an interest or a cause. And that's why this summer, as some of you may have heard, we've actually decided to change our mission. For the past 10 years, our company was focused on making the world more open and connected. And those will always be really important values to us as a company, but we, what we realized we needed to do more. We thought that just by giving people a voice and by connecting them, that things would naturally improve. And I think th this year um, really marks the fact that it hasn't and that the country, the country, the world is still divided and there's a lot more that we can do. So we want Facebook to be a place where people are able to get their voice out there and encourage diversity of voices to be out there, but at the same time, a platform for people to be able to find common ground. We want people to meet people it is whom they share interests and, and passions, but also meet people it is with different perspectives from them. We want Facebook to be a place where you connect with your family and friends, but also where you build broader communities. And so our new mission is to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. As you can imagine, a company like Facebook, 10, 10, you know, over 10 years old, it, it wasn't an easy process to change our mission, but given the latent impact it is that we felt was happening on our platform, and as we looked externally, the challenges it is that we're facing as a society, we felt as though we really needed to do this. And I think as all of you know, um, this isn't gonna necessarily happen top down. People are gonna wanna, are gonna want to have to want the change. And for us, our belief is that change is local. We believe that when enough people feel a sense of support and purpose in their own lives, then they'll care, then we'll be able to help them care more about the global issue it is that a lot of you guys are tackling. And for me, um, I experienced this in building Haya, a community organizing platform in India. 
um, where we, instead of mobilizing people to show up at rallies, for example, on women's safety issues, we met women in their neighborhood. We had them, talk, we had them meet each other. We had them talk about their fears. We had them work on creating neighborhood watches and build stronger relationships with the local, lo with the local police. And through this experience, I really learned that people want to take care of their neighbors, and they also want the support of their neighbors. And once people feel that support, then they're able to take on some of the bigger um, things that we wanted them to take on, like, for example, lobbying for policy change at the center in Delhi. And I think today, you know, I did this all offline in neighborhoods working with people. Facebook really allows us to be able to create that sense of locality and localness um, even across distance. And so research by Bob Putnam and others has actually also proven that the more connected we are, the happier we are, and the healthier we are. People who go to church are more likely to volunteer or donate but not because they're religious, because they belong to part of a community. And that's why it's so striking to us that membership in all kinds of groups has declined by over a quarter in the last few decades. So that's a lot of people who need to find a sense of purpose, belonging, and support elsewhere. And what we found is that some of these people are finding it on Facebook. We found that more than 100 million people are members of what they call a, a meaningful community on Facebook. So whether it be the Breast Cancer Journey Support Group, the, addiction, the Affected by Addiction Support Group, Black Fathers, these are groups that upon jo joining become a really important part of someone's social network experience, but I think more importantly, their real world experience. These communities aren't just interacting online, which you can tell by some of the pictures here. They're holding get-togethers, they're organizing events, and they're providing support to each other in their daily lives. And what we've learned, um, just like social enterprises, the, at the helm of each one of these communities is a great leader. Lola Omolola is an example of this leader. She lives in Chicago and is originally from Nigeria. She created a secret group on Facebook called FIN, Females in Nigeria, what she, in what she refers to as a no-judgment support group for Nigerian women to be able to provide support to each other on issues ranging from marital issues, to problems at work, to health issues. Today, it has over one million people in it, all women, and remember, it was a secret group, so like none of you can actually even like find it on your phone, so you have to be referred into it. And it's a million Nigerian women all supporting one another. Just actually three days ago, she shared a story with me about how one of the members of the group was uh, uh, facing domestic abuse, and the entire group rallied to get her enough money to get her legal support, to get her a ticket out of um, the city for, for her and her family. So it really, it, you know, like we said, it's not just online, it really is real world impact. And as we've gotten to know these leaders, I think unlike the social enterprises it is that many of us work with, we learned that a lot of them have been thrust into this leadership position unexpectedly. Lola started this group to serve her own personal need of wanting a little bit more support as a Nigerian woman who always felt silenced. But over time, their groups grow like the Hurricane Harvey group, and all of a sudden, thousands of people are depending on them to keep that community strong. And so just like, um, you know, just like social entrepreneurs, we're understanding the, more about the barriers it is that these leaders face. The former director of Change.org, Sarah El Amin, outlined a framework of the barriers it is, it is that community leaders often face. They don't have the tools to do it. They don't have the belief they can do it. They don't have the support they can do it. And they don't have the funds. And so Facebook now, today, is really trying to tackle each one of these barriers to really build a thriving ecosystem for community leaders all over the world. From the perspective of tools, we've launched a whole bunch of new products to help 
community leaders um, be able to use the Facebook platform more effectively to hold their communities together. We launched a product called Group Insights that allow community leaders to get a better sense of the engagement, the membership, the growth, and the trends in their group. We're now allowing groups to link up with one another because we know that the impact of these communities is amplified as they can connect. And I think most relevant for people here in this room is a product called Groups for Pages. So the majority of kind of nonprofits or small businesses likely have a Facebook page to be able to build awareness, but that page is a one-way communication channel for you to be able to talk to your constituents. We now allow for you to quickly take all of those people who are following you on your page and put them into a group so that they can build supportive bonds with one another. And just like conferences like this are here meant to inspire us, give us confidence as social entrepreneurs or as social investors, we're doing the same for community leaders. So this summer, we got together 300 community le leaders in Chicago um, to, be, to be able to meet each other. They shared a love of community, they shared a love of supporting one another, of technology, and of Facebook. And I think we each, um, as Facebook, walked away inspired by how inspired they were to meet another fellow group admin who kind of faced the same challenges and the same aspirations they had. I think in the same way it is that we're inspired to be here in SOCAP. So we wanna elevate these stories. We wanna make sure we're telling the world these stories so that they have the confidence that their work matters. And we also wanna do more of this. So we're gonna be launching a program next year that allows, group ad that allows Facebook group admins and community leaders to be able to meet with each other locally anywhere in the world. And just like managers of companies or nonprofits or social enterprises, we've realized that these community leaders want and need to build their leadership skills. So we're in the process of creating a world-class leadership program that Facebook group admins will be able to go through. So our, work with, uh, our goal with all of this work is actually quite ambitious. In the next 10 years, we, we would like to help one billion people join a meaningful community. If we can do this, we can, turn, we can turn around the decline in community membership we've seen over decades and hopefully rebuild the social fabric that I think we're all craving. And I really wanna invite all of you to join us on this journey. I encourage you to think about the relational capital that exists around the problems it is that you're solving. The connection between the parents whose children you're educating between the citizens of the cities it is that you're wanting to improve, between the patients it is that you're healing. Money is gonna be an important part, part of this equation, but we need to engage people more too. And if there's a way we can help, or if you have ideas for us, particularly on this money dimension, we're really open to figuring out how, how best to collaborate with all of you. Please let us know, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Vaughn is also here, Vaughn, maybe you wanna raise your hand. Um, Juan's also here from Facebook, and we're both on Pathable, and so, you know, this, this call for partnership is, real, is really genuine. We want to be able to learn from you. We're kind of at the, le at the leading edge of figuring out what solutions to these problems are. I've been humbled, Vaughn has been humbled by the number of people who've reached out to us to really figure out how they can use Facebook and groups more effectively to solve their problems. And so, we look forward to working with you all a little bit more. Thank you.